guys, welcome to another episode of Base Coat Basics. I'm Chris Arvin. We're here in the booth at CreateXX Colors. And we are going to talk in this video about a simple topic, uh, something we've discussed quite a bit, but you might be having some questions about it, and that is what is a drop coat or a control coat or an orientation coat? Um, we're going to cover all that. It's all different words basically to say the same thing, and that is a way to make your last coat of metallic or pearl look nice and even without any modeling or any kind of blotch, just nice and even consistent. So I just finished putting the last coat of our silver sealer on this little hood. We're going to let this dry up, and I'm actually going to use our 4103 uh, coarse aluminum uh, to demonstrate this process. Um, the reason I'm going to use the coarse is it's a little more difficult to spray the coarse because there is just a flake. Uh, there's no pigment. There's nothing in there to hide any kind of imperfection in terms of how you apply it. So it's very easy to have the metallic stand up or not sit correctly and have blotch or model or, or fuzzy looking orientation of the metallic. So I figure that's the best way to highlight what it is I'm talking about and go through the steps and why we do what we do and why we're recommending it, a certain process. So we're going to let this get dry and I'm going to grab some aluminum and I'm going to mix it up and we'll put a first coat down and we'll show you guys what's happening next. Okay guys, we're back. Our silver sealer is all dry. It's been about 15 minutes. Uh, it's dry to the touch, nice. I have my 4103 uh, coarse aluminum mixed up and I'm going to put one coat down. We're going to let that dry and then what I'll do is I'm actually going to tape a line in the dead center of this panel and I'm going to end up doing my drop coat on that other portion so we can see the difference. But this is going to be just a regular coat, 50% overlap, just like I would spray any of my base coat colors. So we'll see the comparison between that and a, and a drop coat. Hey guys, we're back in the booth. Uh, that one coat is dry. Uh, it's been about 15 minutes, so it's just about long enough for us to tape on it. Usually I tell you to wait longer to actually tape on it, but for, for this video, we're gonna do that in about 15 minutes. Um, this actually looks really good with one, one coat. Um, hopefully it'll demonstrate the difference in the drop coat, but it kind of points me back to a little side note in terms of what I had for a ground coat on this. I had our silver sealer. So again, we, we reiterate how important that is in a lot of our videos in terms of matching your ground coat to what your base coat color for your coverage coat is gonna be. So the less material you have to put on, the better, the faster your dry times are gonna be and, and the better the results are gonna be. So even as we speak here with one coat of coarse aluminum, maybe go and do a second coat and I would call that done and I'm not stacking the metallic. Which it's more of an issue when you're spraying pearls and metallics, you start building up that flake or building up that pearl and you start creating this uneven surface texture and the more you put on, the worse it gets, it doesn't go away. So it's just a little side note in terms of color keying with your sealer, this looks really good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape a line We'll go across the panel this way. I'm going to do my control coat, my drop coat, or my orientation coat. Again, like what I said before, these are all industry words. They all really mean the same thing, and that's making that last coat nice and even and getting rid of any splotchiness or, or unevenness in your metallic. So we'll do the control coat on this side. And the way the control coat works is it is a drop in air pressure. So you're going to double your distance off your panel. So typically I'm right around eight inches or so off the panel when I spray, I try to be. Uh, we're gonna actually almost go almost 16. And I'm spraying with a W400, so that's right around 20 PSI for my coverage coat. I'm gonna drop that down to about 14 PSI and go with a 75% overlap in terms of where I'm putting my material as opposed to the 50% which you would usually use for your coverage coat. And, and one other thing I wanna touch on is when you're applying your coverage coats, whether it's two or three coats, um, you don't do a control coat after every coverage coat. You're, it's kind of a waste of time and a, and a waste of material. The whole trick is that is your last coat and you're just putting on a nice fog of color just to make sure everything's even. So it's a wasted step if you're putting a coat on and then doing a, trying to get your metallic to look right by the time you hit your second coat. I mean, you should always try to make it nice and even, but don't be super concerned if you see a little bit of a a little blotchiness or striping because that's what that last coverage for your control coat is there to do. That's what you're trying to achieve with that coverage coat. So I'm going to tape a line on this. I'm going to grab my gun. It's the same paint. I mix it the same way. There's no difference in reduction or adding anything. It's the exact same paint. It's just a drop in air pressure at your gun. So we're going to get this going.
And that's it. That's all you're trying to do. This should actually almost be dry to the touch in, in a couple minutes because you're not trying to put it on wet. It's the exact opposite of getting your coverage coat. So we'll check this out when it's dry. We'll pull the tape off and we'll see. We'll do a side by side comparison and see what it looks like. Hey guys, we're back. The drop coat is dry. Like I said, it only takes a couple minutes for this to dry because you're, you're not trying to pound on a coat of metallic. It's just that you saw a nice light coat. So we're going to untape this and hopefully uh, it shows well on camera. We'll see. I might have to move this so you guys get a, a better angle on it. But you should be able to see the difference in color. I can see it here in the booth. It actually has a little bit more of a, a velvet appearance. It's got a smooth, smooth finish to it. So we'll see. Maybe I can move this a little bit so you guys can catch the angle. I'm not quite sure if you guys can see that at all. It should actually, at a side cast, it looks a little bit darker. But square on, it actually has a little bit lighter of appearance. And, and that's, that's fine. That's totally fine. But what we're trying to do, again, is just even out the metallic. So this side I can see there's a little bit of on the side I really see it. Square on it's not so bad but on the side I can see through here and it has just a little bit of real real small modeling and this side here that's totally gone and again that's that's what we're trying to achieve. So one thing that you got to keep in mind is if you do this on one part of your project you have to repeat that process on everything because this will actually slightly change the color but it is actually a good way to keep everything consistent so if you're painting parts separately as long as you go back to this is your last step, it's going to help keep everything the same in terms of color. So even if you used a different gun, you sprayed a different uh, reduction or different air pressure, going back to this as your last step will help tie everything together and make sure everything's even and consistent. So we'll see one more time. We'll see if I can just get a little tilt on here and see if you can see what it is that we're talking about. It's not going to be in your face. It's very subtle, but it is enough that it makes a big difference in terms of the way that metallic looks. And, and one more thing too I want to touch on is you, when you run your hand over this, this all sounds the same. This shouldn't have a dry feel to it. If, you, if it's really dry, that means you just over applied it or you went too high in air pressure and that's the reason we drop our air pressure so the material falls on. You're not trying to create dry spray with big air pressure. So hopefully guys, uh, you like this video and you learned something and we'll continue to keep making them and we'll see you guys next time.